Now, this is an, here's an example, a very uh, significant example, I think, of where the media just get the whole thing wrong, okay? It's like a, a, you'd open the sports page uh, and the Super Bowl was played the previous day, and they, and they say, oh, a couple of football teams played yesterday, and one of them won. You know, that would be the essence of, of how badly they report this. So here is, here is one of these topics, hydrogen car program. President Bush pressed, this is long, several years ago, I made this uh, talk. President Bush pressed his market-based approach to the environment Tuesday night, proposing a billion dollar initiative to develop cars fueled by clean burning hydrogen instead of gasoline. All right, and, and this is still going on today. So you've got to understand uh, what is going on here. So what is hydrogen? Uh, what is hydrogen fuel cell? And why would uh, society want to invest in that? Well, like any reporter would do, you go to Google and you Google hydrogen fuel cells, okay? I did this several years ago, like I said, it may still be active. But what I found as the first link was the Hydrogen Fuel Cell Institute. And here are some quotes. And this is what reporters love to do, okay? At long last, a technology too long overlooked promises to transform society, offering clean and abundant power, hydrogen-based fuel cells could soon end our reliance on oil and minimize emissions of pollution and global warming gases. Okay, that's your hook. That's what the, the science reporter loves to see. And then put aside the environmental advantages to fuel cells, still their promise is extraordinary. They're, because water and heat is produced, but nothing else. So why aren't our fuel cells now powering our office? Because until very recently, their costs were far too high, okay? And I actually saw reporters actually taking almost this verbatim, okay? <clears throat> That's great. You know, you can, you can go and make, you just talk to your scientists, get them to, you know, make cheaper fuel cells, okay? Well, that's, unfortunately, you don't, <laughs> you don't, uh, it doesn't work that way, okay? There's certain physics realities involved. A hydrogen fuel cell creates electricity from the chemical oxidation of hydrogen. Obviously, molecular hydrogen is required for this. There is no molecular hydrogen on this planet, okay? Instead, you have to create hydrogen somehow, and that means you're using energy, another energy source, to split water or to heat up a fossil fuel and crack it open to get the hydrogen, okay? So what energy source now is dominantly used to create hydrogen? Why well, you burn coal, oil, and gas to do it, okay? That's the way you get hydrogen, okay? And so, you know, but aren't hydrogen fuel cells a great energy storage device? And, you know, a genius reporter will get past that first uh, obvious uh, kind of problem and say, well, they are a nice battery, aren't they? Well, not if the efficiency of producing the hydrogen transporting it to the fuel cell, charging them up, and then getting that high electricity out, what if that whole efficiency of that cycle is worse than just charging up a battery from the, from the oil and gas originally? And that's about the situation because the round trip efficiency in a fuel cell is currently about 30%, okay? Now, you know, I'm, I'm not saying that these don't play a role in society, okay? But did anybody understand this, this just dominant, simple uh, concept from reading the newspapers? I think not, okay? I, I looked at a lot of the newspaper articles, and none of them said, well, where are we getting the, ener where are we getting the hydrogen from? You know, where are we, uh, where, uh, what kind of energy source are we using to create the hydrogen? What is the efficiency of that round trip? It's, it's just appalling how poorly these issues, which are really crucial for your future, are reported. So the essence of the debate on energy is, you know, what primary energy source do you want to use? And so, uh, as far as I can tell, <clears throat> there is only four generic classes of energy production, okay? And so, uh, one is burning hydrocarbon uh, fossil fuels, or no, just burning hydrocarbons. <clears throat> and this means fossil fuels like coal, oil, and natural gas. That's uh, quite obviously very familiar. The other is uh, using hydrocarbons that you grow out of the ground, biomass, biofuels. Okay, I, I actually am a big fan of biofuels because that takes carbon out of the atmosphere, and then when you burn it, puts it back. And that makes a complete CO2 cycle. 
And so I think, for instance, society should uh, dominantly be going towards that direction uh, with some of these others in the mix as well. And so, uh, <clears throat> but that, and I come to that from kind of a physics point of view. Okay, if your if your goal is to is to get energy in a continuous basis without affecting the environment, you know, clearly you want to cycle, and and you want to make that your dominant form of uh, energy. That's that's just my opinion, but that's a scientific opinion. The society aspects come in from. All right, now you have to convert a lot of land over to production of biofuels. And is that <coughs> worth it? Who's the winner? Who's the loser? You know, do you want to fight a war to get land to, uh, to, to do this? Or do you want your friends to have the, the, the upper hand in creating biofuels? Some of the other uh, sources are, of course, nuclear power plays a role. But again, uh, you never see this reported. How much? How much uranium is there on the planet? Anybody know, know how long will it last? Ten years. How much? Ten years. Ten years? It's, it's a little bit longer than that, but you know, on the order of 50 years or something like that. Decades, okay? So uh, at, at the current rate of usage, if you increase the usage, yeah, it could last you know, 10 or 20 years, and that's it, okay? So unless you make a breeder reactor and use that as, uh, then nuclear has significant problems just in its fuel and the amount of fuel it has. Fusion is a great option, and we should be investing in that. Then there are, so those are the nuclear aspects. Terrestrial sources are things like geothermal energy, tides. This is a neat little snake uh, project that they have in Portugal that, you know, as it bounces up and down on the waves, uh, I should say t tides and waves here, uh, it generates electricity. In fact, there's an article in today's New York Times about the generation of electricity from, uh, from waves. And then, of course, there's wind power, which all, all these things I'm in favor of because they have very little, uh, very little uh, pollution uh, at the end. And, of course, solar is a very good one, too. But you need very large arrays. This is an example of an array of just mirrors that are focusing light on this big uh, uh, tower. And this is in Australia. And, and that just creates hot air rising. It's a very simple, very easy, uh, you know, the physics of this is trivial. Hot air rises, okay. But I guess my point here is <clears throat> what, what is driving the debate on energy? And basically it is science, dominantly science, physics in particular, because energy is a physics issue. And then of course there's the society impacts, which are like politics. And so the, this, I talked about this at the beginning because this is the most important issue for you guys, I think, in your, in your life. And you gotta start thinking about it intelligently, okay? You, you can't, uh, as an example, I, I don't have this, uh, I don't talk about this, but let's talk about biofuels, for instance. Right now, they're pushing corn as biofuels, uh, as a biofuel. But if you look up the efficiency of corn as a biofuel producer, it is the worst, of the worst of all biofuels, okay? Uh, um, you know, it, it, they're not by a little bit, but like a factor of 10, okay? And so I have seen a list of the various biofuel plants. Corn is at the very bottom. It is the worst thing you want to use. What's the best? Well, there's something called Jatropha, which is a really nice uh, plant that just like produces these pods bursting with oil. Okay, so you know why not plant that? Okay, it's ten times more efficient, and it's it's like a weed. You can plant it anywhere. <laughs> So, uh, to my mind, you, you would just want to convert huge tracts of wasteland into, uh, into jatropha uh, plants. Here's another example, though, a little closer to home, about how Fermilab could, could help uh, this, this issue. Uh, amazingly enough, accelerators can be the trigger mechanism in a, in a relatively clean thorium reactor. Okay? This is not uranium like normal fission reactors, it's a thorium reactor.